without 4.3 beta 2 is out and with it amazing features have come as well as fixes for the features introduced in 4.3 beta 1. In this video we will check everything out and also we'll discuss important information about the feature of this version. Let's get started. Firstly, we're going to be talking about small additions and fixes in this version. So basically here in this post, in the official Google website, we can find all the information related to it. As we are probably expecting, this version is just going to be a version in which they are going to be making the experience a little bit more stable, that in which they are going to be fixing some bugs and errors from beta 1 so we shouldn't be expecting lots of new changes or risky bug fixes i'm going to highlight two new things two small additions that are now in without the first one is this one add the global sub to re reorganize project settings dialog and if we go to the github there we're going to find more information so now we have here in this global stuff we have more stuff that can be global as we usually have the auto load we have stuff related to shader and lastly we have global groups that this was a new feature introduced in um this new version the previous version okay then other change or addition or bug fix related to something new in that version was the time map layer okay that came here to replace the time map and well here basically they fixed that timeout layer wasn't respecting physics interpolation mode once again we can go to the github pr and we'll maybe find a little bit more of information throughout the comments and information now let's start with the uh, features that are new in the version i mean in general in 4.3 okay so the first one is the auto of this check as you can see well currently i am in a good old 4.3 beta 2 and well, I have here this message that they still have to fix because I am currently the latest version that is available and I am still here getting this message that there is some kind of update available. And well, it just, uh, of course, uh, redirects me to the 4.3 beta 2 because this is the latest version. Okay, so this should be fixed. But now you're going to be able to auto check for updates if you don't have this turned on because it is off by default. Just go to settings and over here on network mode, make sure that it is set to be online. Again, here in the project manager, a new feature is the fact that now you can create a new folder automatically. So you can go here to the create new project button. And here you have this uh, button that will allow you to automatically create a folder in the project path that you have selected. For example, I will create here a new one, 4.3 beta 2. And as you can see here in the project path, that well by default is just the documents, I will have there a new folder created. If this option didn't exist, Okay, I will have to here click browse and create a new folder. So this can save some seconds. Of course, it's not something that will have a huge impact on your game development, but it is still an option that can save you some valuable seconds. Okay, moving on to more specific new features, more useful new features, we have the tile map layer. Now, in this brand new project, I will just create a brand new to the scene and save it. So now, here, if we look for tile map layer, for time up, sorry, we're going to be finding two options: the uh, ordinary time map that we are used to using, um, and then we also have the time map layer. Okay, basically these two will work the, in the exact same way, just that the time map is deprecated. This means that it will no longer receive new features, and that is going to be soon deleted. So you have make, you have to make sure that you are actually using time map layer instead of time map. Um, let's actually add here both. And basically, you remember that in time maps you have here different layers that you can use. So basically, each time map layer is one layer that you have here. Um, so literally everything else is the exact same thing. They both use tile sets, and tile sets are created in the same way. Um, so every single option is the exact same one, but now uh, instead of having just one time map with um, different layers, you have different time map layer nodes. And how can you adapt your existing projects in order to use this new time map layer? Let's say that, for example, we have here three layers. I will have a background. I will have a foreground. And I will also have here, let's say, plants, for example. And now if I wanted this to become actual uh, time map layers, I can just go here to these settings and extract time map layers as individual time map layer nodes. I will click there. 
By the way, last our time up is currently empty. I'm getting no output. So let's create here quickly a new tile set. And I will just use here the without icon. I will adapt the size accordingly. This is 128. So let's modify these settings accordingly. So 128, 128. And then here the tile size is going to be the exact same one. Like this. So here we have it. And now in the tile map, in the background, I will have, let's say... Uh, here this row then in the foreground I will have this other row and implants this other row so now when I extract them as individual layers I have them over here and then you can just uh, change this node to something like a node 2d okay and there you will have it talking about new nodes we have changes in the parallax layer and parallax background nodes so we used to use basically a parallax background and then each para parallax layer. Okay, like this. But now we have a node that will do the will do both things in just one node. And this node is the parallax 2D. So the settings are again quite similar to what you would have. Okay, but just that everything is now going to be everything literally in the same node. So it's going to be a little bit easier you don't want how to use like much much notes in order to create this parallax effect of course in both cases you still need uh some sprites to render okay but uh you you won't really have to use this parallax background okay so you save this node because you only have to use parallax 2d because as you can see it is it contains these scroll properties okay uh, but well, you still have to use the sprite 2D, of course. There are also some changes in the groups. It doesn't mean that everything has literally changed in terms of the groups, but in how they are created, assigned, um, yes, there are some changes. So now, for example, I have here this node 2D and I go to a node and group section. You can see sync groups and global groups. This is super easy to understand. Basically, sync groups are groups that can only be assigned in the uh, scene that they are created. So if I create here a new group, Okay, I will, I, as you can see, we have a new interface here as well. I will create here uh, scene one, okay? I will create it over here. So this is a scene group, scene one. And if I create here brand new scene, I won't see that scene group as this group only exists in this one. Um, and as you can see, now to assign these groups, it is as simple as selecting any node and enabling that checkbox, okay? And the same thing with uh, deleting them. Um, and then also, if we want to get the group name or something like that, we can just copy here the group name and in any script, we are going to be able to there paste in the group name. This will allow us to avoid any kind of misspellings when having to uh, copy the uh, group name, let's say manually. And on the other hand, global groups are groups that can be assigned to nodes in any scene. So for example, we select here my node 2D. And I will create a new uh, group. I will call it global. You have to make it here global. And when you create a group that is global, you can add a small description, for example. Okay. Here I have it. And here I'm going to be able to assign it as well. Again, all code, literally everything works uh, just uh, as the way that it used to be. But now the way of creating, assigning them, it is a little bit different. Last but not least, now the documentation here inside of Godot contains a highlights, okay, as you can see, and also a copy button for the uh, code, okay. So now we are able to quickly copy and paste the code whenever we need to, right there, okay, so it is a little bit easier. So this was all for this new version, Godot 4.3 Beta 2, of course, there are lots of new things or risky bug fixes, but well, there are still some 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 little things that were uh worth mentioning and well we also took advantage of this and mentioned the new features as well so if you want to know more stuff about this new version of without to know the latest news uh make sure that you are subscribed to the channel because i'm always the first one to upload this news see you in the next one and bye bye